check, check, check one, two. It's Thursday, April 7th, 2022. Bringing you another Sierra chart custom study. This time it is for a futures, a group of futures traders in Fat Cat's room who wanted to be able to have the Sierra chart DOM. This is the trading DOM right here. They wanted to be able to scrunch up this price, uh, these price values right here, and you can't. You can't move this column over. Um, you can move every other column, but not this one. So they requested to be able to add a label column. So if we go to trade, uh, customize chart trade columns, you can see I've added this label column. You will need to add this. Uh, to get this to work. Um, and then you can hide the price by doing a different setting, which I'll show you in a second. But what they want is basically like how it's set up in Jigsaw, where you can have the price in the middle and be able to scrunch it up. And so what we built was uh, a study, a C++ Sierra study, that allows you to do exactly that and print all those values into the label column. And so here's the settings. You can adjust the colors. You can adjust the offsets of the text so it lines up perfectly for your setup. You can adjust the number of digits you want to display from the right-hand side. Um, you can change the font size, bold, et cetera, et cetera. So, and also the last trade colors can be different than uh, the, the other labels as well. So basically what this does is it takes the prices on this price ladder and it caps them based on what you you input it as the number of digits and that allows you to be able to uh, move this uh, column here and resize it how you want and then in order to get rid of this column you go to chart settings and then you go over to scale and then you see this height value scale you just go ahead and flip that to yes and boom now you just have your trading DOM with the prices that are uh, truncated to whatever number of digits that you actually wanted and um, it works great and it works on a bunch of different symbols uh, including the bonds including fractions etc so this is ZT um, let's go ahead and go over to uh, ES uh, here's ES and um, let's see I uh, kind of want to add back the the prices value scale just so that it's easier to reference what is actually being shown. So instead of like 44, 92, and 25, you can have it just show 92, 25. You could also have it just show uh, 250, 275, 3, etc. Um, by going into here and then hitting make changing this to be only three digits. So now you have just 250, 275, 3, 325, etc. And so whatever market you're trading, this will be able to uh, to handle that. And then what else? Uh, what other uh, the bond symbols? So like ZN, uh, same thing. ZB, same thing. Um, so that's what that's what it uh, does. So let's walk through the code now. So if you don't care about what the code's actually doing, you can go ahead and stop there. Uh, and go ahead and download the link. I'll put it in the description of the video. But if you're curious of how the code works, I'm going to step through it really quickly here. Um, so at the top, we are calling a function definition, uh, or not calling. Jeez, it's late. We are defining a function that we're going to be calling later. Uh, this is the way that Sierra hooks into the Windows 32 API and the WinGDI libraries to be able to print on top of the screen. Uh, like this. So, also by the way, if you scale this, it it reacts to it, so it just changes along with you as you scale. So you can set it to whatever you want. Um, got a bunch of inputs here. The ones that we saw over here correspond to these. Um, just configuring the inputs here. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, you can go check out a previous video I had on how to do your first Sierra chart study. And then the WinGDI function is here's the hook uh, that we're pointing to, and here's the entry to that function here. And in here, we're just grabbing all our inputs values. First thing we do is we get the X uh, coordinate, the pixel coordinate of the label column, which is the one that we added here. This is why it's crucial to add the label column to your DOM and applying the offset that is also in the settings. And then we go ahead and grab the 
font type that we're using for your font, and then uh, deciding if we want to bold it or not, building a font object, and then we are grabbing the high and the low of the visible graph. So uh, this function get main graph visible high and low does it grabs 4406 here and 4502 here and stores them into here. So the high would be 4502, the low would be 4406. And as I scale, those would get updated. So now it's going to be 4428 and uh, 44 or whatever that is. And uh, what I do is I calculate the difference between those and then divide that by the tick size in order to get the number of levels that are actually displayed here because we need to know how many levels are displayed here. And then I'm also making the, uh, the starting point, which is the low. You could start from the top and decrement, but I just started from the low and started printing the numbers upwards, whatever way you want. It's fine. Um, we just start at the bottom and we go to the number of levels that we have and we just iterate through this loop and print this up. So first thing we do is we get the next price starting down here and then adding one tick size, another tick size, another tick size, another tick size. We format it to look pretty. And at this point in time, it's still in this value, this big uh, wide value. And then what we do is, oh, so this is an important part. Certain um, go, go visit this link, okay? Uh, download the code, go visit this link. Certain uh, symbols like bonds have different formats. Uh, some of them are in quarter 30 seconds, some of them are in eighth 30 seconds, and they need different uh, strategies for how to output this cleanly onto the screen. So this is the magic that's making that output cleanly, basically. All I'm doing is detecting the place where these uh, decimal points, it depends on the symbol and how it's how it's built. So um, the, the difference between the bonds, the ZF, the ZB, the ZT, and all these other ones, um, uh, they, they're all formatted a little bit differently, so this handles all of that mess, basically. This ZT is crazy, too. This uh, eighth 30 seconds output that results in these types of tick sizes. So I'm, at, I'm dealing with all that there. And then what I do is I simply trim the price that we want to display to the number of digits that you wanted to have uh, according to the settings. And then we're just grabbing the Y value that is corresponding to the price that we're at. Uh, now we have the X value and the Y value. And then we're detecting if this is the last trade price or not. And then we're just outputting it and then blowing away the, the font object at the ends uh, so that we don't uh, have that memory leak issue that we saw the first time we tried to do this. And that's it. That's how she works. So um, you can see it there. You can see if I switch to ZT. Um, this is a very, like, look how long these are right here. You see how long these prices are? But now you don't have to have that. You can have it like this or whatever f configuration that you want. So it uh, should help some of the futures guys. And um, yeah, hope that helps. Have a good night.